Greetings, loved ones. Greetings, beloved. Welcome, new subscribers. Thank you, subscribers, for following, sharing, liking our videos, supporting the channel. Namaste, Ashe. I love you. My name is Reverend Penelope. You can follow Chemistry on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok now. So that's where we are. That's where our platforms are. Uh, I wanted to come here and have a little sit down with you and talk about what's been going on with me lately. You guys know I haven't been here lately. Are you probably saying, what's going on with you? What's What you been going, you know, what you got going on? You ain't been here lately. What you been doing? It's been so many things going on with me. Uh, working with the ancestors, nothing bad. Um, a lot of growth. Growth is not bad. <laughs> uh, depending on how, you know, some people look at growth as bad. I, I've, I've certainly have uh, learned to look at it as a good thing because it levels me up. So a lot of growth has been going on, and I've been working very closely with the ancestors. Uh, this winter year, you know, I have been really focused on a lot of introspection and reflection. And as you know, you guys, I've been uh, on the healing journey for a little while. I've been doing tarot for about 20 years. I worked for angels for about 10 years. About uh, six years ago, I ran into the ancestors. You know, the angels introduced me to the ancestors. And the more I think about angels and ancestors, they look the same to me. Um, and I, because I was getting uh, messages from angels all the time about healing, but because I had so much trauma, I couldn't see where I needed to heal. Uh, and the ancestors really brought light to that when I really started to do my own shadow work. That's why I created the Know Thyself class. Without that class, uh, that course that I created, I don't think I would be having any of these experiences that I'm having. The ancestors helped me develop that for myself. And, and, and I've been working it. Uh, refining, leveling up every season, one day at a time, uh, learning more about myself and about the ancestors as well. So here lately, I have been having some really introspection experiences, uh, things that I did not like this winter, you know, because, you know, during the winter, people get depressed. They get sad, and a lot of us, we may not even know why, uh, but because I have the Know Thyself program, I'm able to say, okay, this is what's going on with me. This is why I'm feeling the way I'm feeling, and I need to do this work. And then spiritually, being spiritually in tune, knowing which, with, with each season, there is a different medicine that comes with each season. And with the season of winter, a lot of death and rebirth is going on with um, winter. It's doing a lot of death and rebirth. And so there are some things in my life that I needed to put to death and some things that I needed to birth. Uh, the ancestors had brought that to my life, brought that to my attention. And so when I begin to bring, you know, do the work that they say, hey, this is this this needs to die. This habit needs to die and you need to rebirth this. And so when that that happened, uh that shift happened, more information, ancient knowledge began to come in um and learning more about the spiritual practices of my our of our ancestors. That was one of the main things I wanted to come here and share with you today for those of you who are on your journey and you're trying to find out where, you know, where, what should I do? You know, what are the ancestors going to teach me? When are they going to teach me? Um, how am I supposed to learn? I wanted to come here and share my journey with you to encourage you, to empower you, to keep on the journey. And it's really worth it, you know, to share my story with you and how the ancestors have been working with me. I'm a metaphysical practitioner. Of, I've always been spiritual and had paranormal experiences that happened in my life. Uh, throughout my life, I came from a very uh, dysfunctional, traumatized family. But at the same time, I was 
through my healing work, I'm able to go back through it and get the medicine and do a lot of healing work and establish new relationships with those family members from beyond and new relationships with the ones that are here and create better energetic boundaries to the ones who are still under the sickness of trauma. As well, I'm more responsible. Now, I'm doing what my ancestors that were living could not do. Uh, just setting that, again, about death and rebirth. And so uh, that's really what's been going on with me. I have not been on social media. I have not been on social media in a little while. I've not been here because they've been telling me I don't need to do that. A lot of my energy need to be focused on the messages and the communication, the things that they're sharing with me. It's been such a phenomenal experience. You know, I had to come here and share it with you. And maybe, you know, like I said, it may encourage you, empower you on your journey. It's it's, it's certainly, um, I'm, I, I, like I say, it's just, I'm a loss of words. So I thought I just would come here and, and share some things with you. And you guys know I come here and I share books with you, information with you, anything that will help you on your journey because I want you feeling good on the inside as well as on the outside. I want you healed, not to just tap into your inner, inner magic, but to find healing and wholeness in it as well. And so I know if you're anything like me when I first began my ancestral journey, uh, to wake up to all the healing work that needed to be done. It was, oh, because there's so much trauma there. And I didn't realize that I was in the condition that I was in. I said, whoa, how am I going to do that? You know, which ancestors do I connect with to get the healing that I need? You know, because of the, the family members I have now, they are sick. You know, they're under the karmic loop. They're, you know, they're in the intergenerational trauma. And there's nothing I can do to get them out of it. That's, that's sort of a choice thing. They have to want to get out of that karmic loop and get out of the trauma-based thinking. And so I've got this book. I had already started working with land ancestors. I remember the first ritual I did. This is before I got this book. I remember the first ritual I did. I probably have talked about this on this channel before. But the first ritual I did... Uh, the ancestors I did out there in Toltec Mounds here in Arkansas, Scott, Arkansas. There are current energy currents out there up under the water. This is why our ancestors, you'll see the mounds near water, because under those uh, under those mounds are energy currents. Those water, the water gives off that current, and it runs up under those mounds, up under that land there. That's something the ancestors have uh, have shared with me. There's ley lines out there in energy fields that uh, it's easy to harness that uh, the energies out there. And so I had been wanting to do a ritual out there, and I had finally found a ritual that I wanted to do. And I, it was raining really wanting a heart one day. And they guided me to go out there. And when I went out there, it had stopped raining. I've never seen anything like this. Some of that was storybook. The, the sun came out over my head. Birds started, you know, birds were flying. White birds were flying across the sky. Fish was jumping out the water. It was just such a beautiful thing. I seen a, a man when I first started my ritual. Before I started my ritual, I saw a man that looked just exactly like Papa Legba. Which I'll talk about uh, that at an, another time. But, I mean, I ran into my ancestors. I mean, it was such a beautiful experience. And then I ran into this book about how to connect with ancestors outside first. Okay, you may not have any good family members, but the ancestors that's connected to the land, the ancestors that they were that were healers, that were shamans, the ancestors that chose not to be born in this plane, that are star ancestors that's watching over us, you know, you can certainly work with those ancestors and doing some healing work. And that's what I did. So if you if you if this is one of your disposition 
or this is the safest way. If that even is not your disposition, you're not even sure you want to work with family members and you want to work with our, I mean, with um, ancestors that are already highly evolved. You can start out this way. This is the safest way. It's to go out if you really feel safe. Work with the ones who's already did the elevation work. You know, and I would say that's, again, these are more angelic. They're more angelic-like. You know, they're healers. They're shamans. So they're, they're more angelic light if, if, if you want to work safely with ancestors. Go outside and then uh, as you go outside, the ones that's closer to you, they'll reveal themselves to you if they want to work with you or you want to work with them. But this is the safest way here is to go out and then come in. Uh, another thing that a book I recommend as well I can't emphasize this book enough. You know, I developed the Know Thyself course. And in doing the Know Thyself course, doing uh, the psychogenetics, the shadow work, going inside my mind, my heart, my spirit, breaking all that down, I did this. Do this. I'm, I, I, couldn't emph I cannot emphasize this enough before we start doing anything. We need to be burning candles, doing healing work on us and our family. Do this first before you do any other magic tap into anything else. Do this because we need to be healing, feeling whole. Again, we're trying to master our emotions, master our mind. That too is about tapping into your inner magic. You're not going to be able to properly master these energies if we can't master our own mind and emotions. Okay? So this is, and, you know, and sometimes we're blocking ourselves and don't even know it. So I say do this work first, beloved. Do the healing work and the ancestral work with your ancestors first. Okay? Do that 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 healing work with them first. I, I can't emphasize this enough. Do the and this book is called Who Do Spells of Uncrossing Healing and Protection. Now I was guided to do this a lot with my ancestors when I first started my Know Thyself course when they helped me develop that. I did a lot. I still do a lot of this work. This is the, the bulk of my work. Okay. And I've seen benefits from doing the, those together. Okay. Uh, what is another book? Who should get your, you know, let me go back. Let me not go into this first. This book. Let me go to this book next. This book. I like this book. Uh, this really helps you build confidence in creating your own spiritual system. It really helped me create my own spir uh, spiritual system, my own ancestral system that I feel confident about. Okay, this is an Ancestral Magic by Vivi Gunn. This is a really good book. She gives you so many... Um, different things she shares with some things with you that'll help you build your own system and feel confident in it okay so i do i recommend this book this this will really help and you're probably already doing it because it was a a lot of confirmation what she was giving me i was already doing it and didn't know it was a lot of confirmation to me that i, I was building my system i was going about it the right way to build my system so this is a really good book to help you build confidence and build your system you might find a lot of this helpful now you may not want to do everything out of these books you know uh again it is to bring you insight and wisdom as well because i don't do everything in these these books i found that i do some of the things in these books and it confirms it uh, but what works for me, I'll, I'll take it out of here and I'll put it into my system. Again, this is how, this is about tapping into ancestral knowledge, building your own ancestral knowledge. Okay, your ancestors will tell you what will work for you and what don't. You know, uh, for 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 example, I didn't want to work with Bible scriptures. I didn't want to work with Bible scriptures, but the ancestors said, "Hey, you have to work with Bible scriptures because this is about." Uh, working with energies we work with the energies of rocks dirt because they have me collecting certain dirt now certain dirt for certain need to go on certain candle spells because certain dirt from different areas have energies in them so now i'm being called to collect dirt 
different herbs, rocks. So we already know some of the basic things. These things have energies in them. And then too, when we call on ancestors, we're not talking about just people. We're talking about ancestors are our trees, ancestors that are rocks. Okay, some, some of them, these are the nature that has sustained us. And, had, and our ancestors had a special relationship with nature. They understood that they sustained them. And they were the ancient most oldest ancestors. And now what we're trying to do is understand our ancestors and understand how they had this relationship with nature. So we're reaching further back to get this knowledge. Okay? Uh, so understanding that your 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 ancestors, you do have ancient ancestors there, they're willing to help you and opening up your mind to a broader idea of what ancestors who are who ancestors are as well. And then bringing it back into familiar. Because I want I want you to understand your power as well. You know, that's certainly how the ancestors taught me. And so let me see this book who do shrines and altars this book is going to be we need to get be knowing get your altar work if you're really serious about your healing and you really want to see changes come in there an altar is all about shifting that's why it's called altar it's called shifting energy bringing energy in manipulating energy that's what this is all about altering your reality again to tap into that metaphysical reality Bringing that energy in. Uh, some of us, we're doing money work on an ancestral altar. Please, I don't recommend that you do that. You're That's confusing. Now, if you're going to be uh, working with your ancestors, again, of all about hoodoo, everything is a symbol. Everything represents something. Colors represent, certain colors represent, like green represents money. Okay. Food reps, different foods represent money. If you want your ancestors to work with you with food, then orange, put oranges on there. Oranges represent prosperity. And given the orange, you know, you might want to rub the orange all over your body and say, ancestors, I offer you this orange uh, as a symbolism of prosperity and abundance that I would like to bring into my life to have you help bring into my life and put it on the altar. Say if it's knowledge, you want to bring my knowledge in, you know, you might want to rub the apple, you know, next to your head and say, ancestors, you know, you don't have to put it on there because you want to respect their food, but, you know, put it next to your head, near your head and say, I give you this, this, uh, this apple. In honor of your wisdom and knowledge, may it bring me guidance and understanding on my journey. I wish to know your knowledge. You know, it's beneficial in my life. And so you can put the apple on the, on the altar. Then, and, and make sure when you're going there, you're focusing on that. You know, you're focusing on talking to them about how you're bringing prosperity in your life, how you want, you, you need their help and uh, giving those offer offerings that represent that. That's why the black eyed peas and greens uh, and cornbread, that's a good representation of that. That's a prosperity meal that they did every year. Again, it's it's a symbol and, and spirit recognizes that. Again, that's something that our ancestors had set up that we recognize that as a prosperity meal. Then you get your own altar. You know, you say you got your money altar. You're on your money altar. You got your green candles out there. You got your money oil out there. You got all your change and money, everything that represents money there. And you ready to do your spell work. Well, now you've talked to your ancestors about the prosperity or, or healing work or whatever you're trying to do. You've already talked to them about that. And that now you can call on them. When you get ready to call on your spirit guides and cast your protective circle, and calling your spear guys, your angels to help you in your spell work, they already know what to do because you've already talked to them about that. You've already established your grounds. And you'll see that that get a lot better. Again, we want to keep the uh it simple. We want to keep the line of communication clear because your spirit speaks in symbols. Okay, my ancestors they really they literally told me that. You get everything confused because you you don't speak in symbols. So we need you to say what you need. And then we'll show you in symbols 
your results. You know, we'll show you. So you don't speak in symbols. You need to speak in words, okay? So we need to speak the words to them. And then when we call in, go in and do our, our work, we'll call them in there. So don't try to do a lot of work on your ancestors' altar. It's just meant to dedicate it to your ancestors. If you want them to help you, then it's a way that you have to do that, okay? I want to make that clear. And I do I do recommend an altar. Who do candle work? Oh, I love this. I love who do candle work. And I can't really talk about candle work without talking about this other book, these other books too. <clears throat> who do candle work? Okay. Keep in mind when you doing candle work, it's a it that all this is a ritual. This is about repetition. Some of us are under the understanding that we do a candle work one time and it, it should be done. With hoodoo, I see them following up with 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 rituals of three, seven, five, nine, thirteen. You might can do this ritual, but every time you burn the candle, you might have to take a bath three days in a row every time you burn this candle. You might have to say the scripture three to five to nine times to get the results that you want. It's not no pass by thing. It's got to be followed up a ritual. And then when you do take a, a, a hoodoo bath, how are you taking that bath? It's a certain way you're supposed to take a bath. You can't just get in there and just wash, just wash any type of way. You, you, it's a way you have to wash to bring things into your life. And there's a, a, thing, a way you have to wash to wash things out of your life. Again, it's about intention, mindfulness. That's, the, that's just like when we, you do a hoodoo um, floor wash. When you you're want something out of your house, you, you mop outside. Like you mop like you're moving outside of the house to what you want, whatever's out of the house. When you want something coming in your house on the floor wash, you mop like you come in the house. You stand in the house and mop like you calling something into the house. Like you call it in good spirits. See, it, it's a methodology to this. Everything is a hoodoo mind. It has to be thought out first. That's just like if you're folding a petition. Okay, this got to be followed by some type of repetition. Uh, when I write my petition, I never did want to use the Bible in my uh, hoodoo practi uh, practices. But what the ancestors taught me, the rocks, dirt, all of this have energies. That's why it's called conjure work. We use these energies and manipulate these energies to create, to manifest. Okay? This book was great for that. You know, say I, I write a spell. And usually in my spell work, I will incorporate it into a scripture to energize. The scripture just really energizes it because this is what our ancestors used. They knew that there was energies in the scriptures that they can use. It already has psychic energy in it because it has a universal truth in it. Okay, so they knew how to use these universal truths in the Bible to create or manifest what they wanted. And so sometimes this book really helped you show you how to write things in a certain way with seagulls and lock it down or write over it to dominate it. So sometimes this will work for me as well. It may not work for you, but for me, what helped me and this is hoodoo, you know, it is, and I'd never wanted to do it, but this is how my ancestors said, this is the tradition. This is why we use it this way. This is how you may not agree with it, but there's energies in here that got the work done. And, and that's what we're trying to help you go back to, whether you agree to it or not. See, me and my ancestors, we go back and forth uh, with things because I want, I want things to be a certain type of way. And then I want to honor them in a way where I don't want to, you know, dredge up all that trauma because I just feel like, you know, some of the way that the Bible was used was traumatizing. But they're showing me how they use it to empower themselves, how to get uh, that psychic energy, you know, that spiritual uh, benefits out of it. And so sometimes uh, I will use this petition to lock down my work, you know, paper in my shoe. So if I'm going to do candle work, I'm going to put that candle on top of that petition. Okay, so it's certain ways, but I'll be talking about this a little bit 
more on the channel showing you how to lock down work, uh, uh, how you should write out a petition, depending on what you're trying to do. You know, I'll show you a little bit about that. That's what we're going to be doing in 2022. I'm going to be talking about, uh, more about my experiences and more of more of what the ancestors teach me and what has been working for me. And maybe it'll help you. Okay, but this is a good book too, really helping you understand writing things down and how to write it in a way to uh, lay a trick, you know, some way I can put it. Uh, the Hoodoo Bible, you know, I represent, I mean, I, re I do recommend this because again, she's teaching you how, because she says sacred, sacred secrets of scripture sorcery. And so... This is a really good book. This is really good, too, because she's teaching you how to use the scripture. She's teaching you how to use the scripture in your spells. And all, and also saying that, hey, you can, you can write a spell and tie it into a scripture. And that's really what I do. I'll write a spell out according to what I, I say I want. And then I find a scripture that resembles that. And I will use that scripture in the spell. To energize it, to give it more. It, it, again, we're working with all the energies around us. That's what Hoodoo was all about. That's why you will see them work with different uh, spiritual systems as well, because they're looking at the energies that they can work with within the system. Okay, that's why Hoodoo don't, don't really is not about religion. That you'll you'll see saints in there. You'll see the Orishas in there. You'll see a different little things in Hoodoo. It's, it's again about working with energies. And your ancestors will lead you like my ancestors led me to work with Papa Legba. I don't know why Papa Legba, he, he showed up in my first in my first uh, ritual with them, my first elevation ritual with them. Papa Legba showed up. Um, um, you know, I work very closely with Papa Legba. You know, that's who I've been working with here lately when I work with the ancestors. That's the only spirit for now uh, that they have me working with, them and Papa Legba. That's it. Okay, uh, I don't know why. I, I guess I find that out what later that it makes sense. But this is a really good book, uh, Hoodoo Bible, uh, showing you how to use the scripture to energize your spells if you're trying to learn how to do. Again, this is the traditional um, way our ancestors learn. You know, I'm I'm interested in reaching back, and this definitely works for uh, our an our ancestor that went through slavery. Uh, learning their own magic, tapping into their own magic. It definitely works. And just tapping into that opens you up to your magic. But again, this is all about healing work too because they did a lot of healing work. They couldn't go to regular doctors. Uh, they had to use their own shamans. This is their own way of practicing their shamanism as well. So that was a good book. Another book I found that was beneficial to me, uh, let me go back here because I have to sign out of here. Sign to my my husband's, and I'm reading a lot of books on Kindle now because I have so many books I have nowhere to put them, and so uh, now I'm forced to. Uh, I have to buy electronic books. I have nowhere to put books. I mean, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. I just don't have a lot of place to put them. So now I'm reading electronically now. Because I just have, I have, I don't have places to put books. They're everywhere. And then I don't want to sell them. <laughs> That's the thing about it. Some people read their books and want to sell them. I'm not really just ready to get rid of all my books. I just feel like they're my little babies. They're just like my crystals, uh, my herbs, my altars. I want them. I want them. I don't, I want them near me all the time. And so that's surrounded by my altar. Okay, so what other book did I want to bring to your attention? Uh, that I read is in my library right now. I think this, I think it's two. There's probably two in here I want to recommend to you. No, three. It's three books in my Kindle I want to recommend to you. Now, this book, Hoodoo Bible, is really good. 
I think it's a really good book. You know, it 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 you know, it gives some good coverage. It just it just wasn't enough in here for me. It's it's, it's a good general. It'll get you started. This is a good good book to get you started. Okay, I would say it's a good book to get you started on some things. There's some good things in here to get you started. However, this book. This book, oh my gosh, I've been going back to this book back and forth since I've been on my altar. I've always had to refer back to this book, you know, for a reference when I'm doing work on my altar. I, this book, I, I get this book if you started on your hoodoo journey and you're a beginner, uh, you want an all in one. This are seven books in one, the hoodoo Bible. Uh, this person, Miss Michael and Professor Charles Portfield. They did an okay job on this. This is good for a beginner, but if you, as you become more, you try to become more fluent in your hoodoo practice, I say get this right here. This is really gonna be a really good reference book to go back to, a quick reference if you need to go back over some things. This is a really good book. It really helped me, also helped me understand that uh, hoodoo, it's a ritual practice. You know, you can't just get up one day and say, I'm going to do some candle work. It has to be thought behind it. It has to be organization behind what you're doing. Uh, it's about creating ritual in everyday life. It's a way of life. You know, it's a way of thinking. Uh, this book really uh, helped you with that. You have to have a metaphysical mind and start to think like that to call these energies in. Okay, uh, the name of this book is Seven in One, the root, the, the root companion to Black Folk Magic, the Hoodoo Bible. I think, and that's right, this book is really good. I, I do recommend it as a reference. I, it's, it's, it, I, it's been, look, ever since I've gotten it, I've had to come back and do work on my altar and go back to this book. So I, I do recommend it. It's, it's. You're going to need it. Uh, what is another book? Did they write this book too? This book right here. Uh, I think I can't even open the book, Lord. It won't even let me open the book. Okay, let me go back. This book is going to be essential too. Okay, we want to get some prayers going uh, for ourselves because this is more of a deliverance book. I know I say to uh, witchcraft, but these are more deliverance. So if we're dealing with depression, if we're dealing with negative thinking, this book is going to be good for that. Say that you can't get past, you can't get, and that's the. I have to go back to this deliverance book. Cause that's why I say don't don't start no magic or get nothing popping without doing some healing work on yourself. Do not. I don't recommend it at all. Cause you're gonna do nothing. Keep crossing yourself up. Okay. Deliverance a lot of, and that's what this is about. But these are a lot of prayers that you can do, which on your ancestor altar. Because these prayers in here is a lot of elevation work to you and your ancestors. So I do, I recommend this book. Uh, it's on Kindle, Prayers and Protection, Magic to Destroy Witchcraft, Banish Curses, Negative Energy, and Psychic Attacks, Break Spells, Evil Soul Ties, and Covenants, Protect, Protect and Release and Favor, Glenda Porter. I thought this was a really good book. <clears throat> the prayers in here are powerful. The powerful prayers, so I do recommend them. Uh, they really help with your ancestral work. They really help with your ancestral work. Let me see. Yeah. And let me see. There's another book in here. 
Is this another one? <clears throat> that I recommend. Again, you got to understand your your own and, and who do to is so familiar. It's so familiar because when it was passed down to me, I can tell you it, it was passed down to me in three ways as a child. I had to be introduced to it. The first way I was introduced to it was through my uh through my mother's uh, boyfriend, we did hoodoo in the front yard by stopping a, um, we prevented a dog from pooping in our yard. Yes. We, we prevented a dog from pooping in our yard and it tripped me out. Now, I don't know. You know, it trips me out that how did he know that I was going to be able to do that. But we were able to do that. And somebody taught him how to do that. He was from the country, from the rural area. You'll see most people that from farms and from rural areas in the country, uh, they will know more about the practice than the people in the urban areas. You know, because again, this is more nature talk. This is about a relationship that was developed with the most oldest ancestors with trees and plants and rocks and spices and animals. So you'll see it being, you'll see it very prominent there, being practiced there. Uh, the second encounter I had with it, I think I was talking to my grandmother about it. And she was telling me, uh, how she used to split storms. She used to split storms and uh, how my great grandmother would teach her how to split, uh, show her how to split storms. Uh, a good example of this, uh, go back and watch the movie Fast Color because the movie Fast Color kind of reminded me of the story my grandmother was telling me. And she certainly had a relationship with plants. You know, I have a story about that. Uh, my grandmother, this plant that we have over here, my grandmother had a, a deep relationship with plants. She always had a garden. I remember that, even though, you know, I came up from a dysfunctional family. Uh, I can remember some things that, that, they, that they practiced I probably, I didn't pay attention to, that now I can go back and pay attention to. But she was always had a garden. She always grew, cu uh, grew cucumbers and tomatoes. If we didn't have any food in the house, we at least had that. She would do that. And she kept sweet potatoes. Oh, my God. That woman made the best fried and baked sweet potato ever. I don't know what she put in it, but it was just so yummy. I've never been able to make a sweet potato like this woman's. Uh, and it was always yummy. Uh, and I had that plant. That plant was in my grandmother's room when she passed away. And my mom bought it from Florida uh, and nursed it back to health. It came back alive, even stronger before. And so as the plant began to grow, I told mom I wanted a piece of that plant because I felt like it was my grandmother, uh, my grandmother's. And so uh, I didn't know what the plant meant until lately I've been working, doing a lot of conjure work and root work with my ancestors. And they say, you know what that plant means that you have, you don't you? And I said, no. I was like, that's why right. you've had it the whole time, and, and it's a message in the plant, and you never uh, looked up what that, the meaning of that plant. And I was like, I sure have not. I said, that's a message in there. You missed the whole message in there because we've been working with you on these issues, and that plant is a, is a message in it. And so when I looked up the meaning of that plant, apothos is good for prosperity, abundance. They grow like wildfire. And this plant is green and healthy. Uh, I have it next to my ancestor altar where I give libations and uh, where we do prosperity and abundance work together. And uh, it's something. So again, sometimes our ancestors are giving us messages and we don't even realize it. We don't even realize we have the message that they have given us. And that was certainly uh, uh, my issue there. But I do, I recommend, uh, you know, doing the prayer work. Uh, 
and remembering that hoodoo is familiar. You know, the closer you work with your ancestors, the things that you will remember that they actually did. I had my great grandmother, she did, she was doing hoodoo too, and I, I was not realizing that she was doing it, it was just something that she did. I remember her putting newspaper on the walls and having jugs of water around the house. And when I asked her about it, she would just smile. And I was like, Big Mama, why are you doing And we call her Big Mama. Again, these are hoodoo names. Big Mama is a hoodoo name. That's a hoodoo name. That's a hoodoo traditional name. I didn't call my great grandma. Uh, uh, we didn't call her. I didn't call her grandma. I call her Big Mama. In fact, she was the only grandmother that was called Big Mama because I called my grandmother Grandma and called her Big Mama. That's what she wanted to be called. So go back and look at the traditional name, the hoodoo name for Big Mama as well. That's a name of power and strength. And certainly she was a, 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 a woman of power and strength, but she also had a lot of trauma. She also had a lot of trauma too. Uh, what is another book? I think that's about it, you guys. Those are the things, you know, that has been uh, that I've read that has helped me. That I've reached back and got a lot of knowledge out of it. I thought I would come here and share this with you. I thought maybe it would provide uh, some type of encouragement, empowerment. Like, don't give up. Keep going. The closer you walk with your ancestors, uh, the more rituals you do with them. It is going to become easier. I'll be coming here more, sharing more about rituals because I'm kind of change the feel of the channel a little bit and start coming here, sharing with you what works for me. Maybe it won't work for you. I wish uh, a lot of practitioners would be clear on certain things. Because what works for another person may not work for you. I have to be clear on that. Uh, and what and what factors into that is your trust and belief into the practitioner. Say you, you hired a practitioner and you trust and believe that their work will work, then it will work for you. Okay, because you trust and believe you have you you built up a certain amount of trust and belief in them. Uh, but say that you tried something else that a practitioner did and it didn't even work for you. That didn't work for you. And that's fine. Again, this is about finding out what works for us. It's not a one size fit all. And uh, I've, seen, I've seen that presented like that that way, but it does. it's certainly not that way, beloved. We're here finding out what works for us and following our ancestors and learning how to trust the communication that's going coming through and i can certainly teach you how to do that i've certainly learned that part of my journey is learning how to communicate uh, with my ancestors and finding out what works for me i can certainly share that journey with you and help you figure out how to work more closely with your ancestors so you can figure out what will work for them um, and I hope this, uh, I hope it helped you. It sure helped me to come here. It sure helped me to come here and share this knowledge with you and share my experience that I've been having here, uh, here lately. A lot of you have been following me and you know my journey and you know me intimately. Uh, I try to be as open as possible, uh, and honest as possible. So I hope this, uh, really helped you. I hope it encouraged you. I hope they empower you. I want you to keep going. I don't want you to give up. You know, you're almost there. And I want to be there to help root you on on your journey. All right? Light, love, namaste. I say love one. You take care.